March 11th marks the anniversary of the World Health Organization identifying the coronavirus to be a global pandemic. The last 12 months have been frightening, dangerous, disappointing, anxiety-filled. Bottom line, awful. Now it's easy to be overwhelmed by negative feelings, but my message today is a declaration of gratitude for the things we have learned and the hurdles we have overcome. Second Timothy tells us, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of self-discipline. First, let us give thanks for the changes we have made in our thinking because of the pandemic. Nurses, teachers, first responders who are traditionally underappreciated are being recognized for their hard work and dedication. All the hustle and busyness that was once the norm has been replaced by a more relaxed and family-focused lifestyle. We have slowed down. We've found more family time, more eating together at home. Drive-ins, puzzles, board games have made a real comeback. There's an increase in gardening and stay-at-home hobbies like baking, sewing, woodworking. With less vacation traveling, driving to work and commuting, there is less carbon emission and cleaner air. And as a result, people have developed more clean air hobbies. All of that hand washing, mask wearing, the sanitizing of surfaces and shared spaces has led to better hygiene. We are now investing in safer housing practices and instituting more telemedicine and homeopathic medicine. Work habits are changing. People are sleeping better and longer. An estimate is that we spend 17 more minutes in REM sleep every night. There's more time to work out and jog and walk. As a result, Communities are stronger, we're sharing resources, and individual initiatives are solving the problems of hunger and isolation. Locally, the League City Animal Shelter let me know that they placed 100% 100, 100 of its pets in forever homes in 2020. And with more free time and better technology, We've leveraged that technology to learn new things. We have online classes, lectures, free concerts, plays that might not have been in our grasp before. Now, 2020 was the year of the virus, but it was also the year of a vaccine. Imagine the discovery and testing in less than a year. The COVID vaccine was a global solution to this global problem. America launched its own astronauts into space again after more than a decade. More people voted in the 2020 presidential election than ever before. And the first woman was elected to vice president. Well, saving the best for last, let's think about the strengths of this church, how we have served the Lord in new and exciting ways. Within one week of the church being shut down for in-person worship, 
we began taping these services online. We have had more young people assisting in church. We have four college scholars singing in our choir. We have three scholars helping us to film. And every single one of our confirmands participated as a liturgist last year. Online attendance has been higher than in-person attendance. We averaged 167 people viewing our online worship in 2020. Our weekly sit in the pews average was 144 in 2019. With the taped service, you can watch anytime. You can watch more than once. And we've been able to maintain membership with families that no longer live in Webster. There's a whole new way of doing church. Now, many, many of our members have learned to Zoom. Some of them didn't even have a laptop before we started. We don't have to drive at night. We don't have to miss a meeting when we're out of town. And we don't have to get a babysitter to participate. Every single one of our Bible study classes has non-local members. We've maintained connection with members that could not and would not be attending in person. And caring for people, which has always been a strength of this church. The deacon board and the session all have call lists so that we can keep in touch with every member. And those people that are techie have gone in and set up computers so that everyone can Zoom. We've handled grocery shopping and delivery for shut-ins. And we have our wonderful Nancy Gusky, who has written a note to every member every month since the pandemic started. In spite of the constrained environment members faced in 2020, Webster Presbyterian Church put $62,000 to work in mission projects. There was more than 13,000 given to community assistant to provide direct support to our neighbors in crisis. Interfaith Caring Ministries was hosted by WPC for its annual Christmas Story event. Family Promise continued to host four families throughout the year as we supported hotel stays during the pandemic and even a summer activities program for the children of those Family Promise families. We assembled hygiene kits. We distributed food. We had a fundraiser for the Peru Network who also had COVID-19 concerns. We made gift boxes at Christmas to send to the Siemens centers. You know, WPC has much to be thankful for. The kindness of its members, the resilience of this institution, the strength of our community of faith, Praise be to the Lord Jesus, the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it.